Hi everybody, welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every single time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we have you covered. So before we get into some Major League Baseball action for July 24th, I want to invite you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So we are beginning the second half of the Major League Baseball season, and this is where the teams really want to start playing well to make that push for the last couple months for the postseason. So let's take a look at some of the games. First game I want to look at is the Chicago Cubs and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Cubs enter the contest dead up versus the Phillies burning hot. Drew Smiley is scheduled to pitch for the Cubs. The Phillies have not yet named their starter. Smiley is 2-5 with a 4.22 ERA, but notice he has a very poor bet at minus $605. If you look at the uh, over-under, you see that the Phillies have been involved in games over the line in three out of their last six. But the Cubs have also been involved in games over the line in half of their games in their last four. The score predictor likes the Phillies by a comfortable 8-2 to two margin, but only 40% level of confidence in the pick at this time. On the power ranking indicator, you can see the Phillies are on the upward trend because of their burning hot play as of late, plus 7 up to plus 17. While the Cubs are at the bottom of the league at zero. The stability factor, note that neither team has been performing consistently with regard to their favorite underdog status, the Cubs at 2 and the Phillies at 1. In the end, though, I think the Phillies just have too much, particularly playing at home, so I like the Phillies, but I would avoid the over-under bet. The Angels and the Atlanta Braves. The Angels are going nowhere fast at dead status versus the Braves, who are average. You notice that the Angels have lost 5 out of their last 6. All the Braves are 4-2 and two over their last six, but they are coming off of a 7-3 loss to Washington. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that Atlanta was at plus 14, and over the last uh, few days before the All-Star break, they raised that up to plus 24, while the Angels are down at the bottom of the league, or near the bottom of the league anyway, at plus 2. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the, the Braves have been involved in games over the line in five out of their last six, while the Angels have been over the line five out of their last six games as well. The score predictor likes the Braves by a 7 to 1 score with nearly 80% level of confidence. That's a pretty high level of confidence for a Braves blowout win. On the volatility oscillator, you see that both teams are consistently performing with regard to their favorite underdog status, with the Braves at plus 27 and the Angels at plus 18. So in the end, I don't really think there's, this is going to be much of a contest either. I like the Braves at home, and I think they will win comfortably in a game going over the line. The Yankees and the Orioles. In Baltimore, the Orioles are average stats at the moment. They have won four out of their last, uh, if we can get this to come up. It just doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. The Orioles have won four out of their last six, but they, they lost two out of their last three before the All-Star break. The Yankees are ice cold down. Losers of their last two and four out of their last six. Nestor Cortez is scheduled to pitch for the Yankees versus Dean Kramer for the Orioles. If you look at the, their stats for the year, Cortez is 7-3 and three with a 2.63 ERA and a 1.18 ERA over his last three starts, and he has a very good bet at plus $397. While Kramer is 3-1 and one with a 2.59 ERA and also a very good bet at plus $517. If you look at the power ranking indicator, see that both teams are at plus 23 at the moment. The Orioles uh, on a slight climb, and the Yankees run a big climb over the last few days. And if we look at the score predictor, the score predictor has the Orioles by a 9-3 score with about 59% level of confidence. If you look at the over-under, you can expect a high-scoring game because the Yankees have been involved in games over the line in each of their last four, while the Orioles in their last four and five out of their last six. On the volatility oscillator, both teams are pretty uh, consistent, although the Yankees have been more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status at plus 28, while the Orioles are at plus 7. And if you actually if you look, they have not been as consistent lately. If you look back on May the 18th, they were at plus 10. So over the last two months, they've actually dropped a couple of uh, points in that regard. So in the end, though, I'm going to go with the Orioles in this one. Normally, uh, over the last few years, you would not pick the Orioles over the Yankees. The Yankees clearly would be dominating the team, but the Orioles are playing pretty solid ball lately. The Yankees are scuffling some. Orioles are at home. Go with the Orioles in a game over the line. 
Blue Jays and the Red Sox, Twins and Tigers. See, it's a full slate of games. We're not looking at all of them. We're going to take a look at six of them. Here's a good one here. The Cleveland Guardians and the Chicago White Sox. As you see, both teams are entering play burning hot. The Guardians have won their last three and four out of their last six, while the White Sox have won five out of their last six contests. If you look at the over-under, you can see that uh, the Guardians have been over in two out of their last four, while the White Sox in three out of their last five. The score predictor has this as a very tight contest, five to four in favor of the White Sox with 54% level of confidence. On the power ranking indicator, you can see Cleveland increased from plus 13 up to plus 22 right before the All-Star break, while the White Sox were in the other direction, 26 down to 16. The stability factor, we always like to take a look at this. Notice that Chicago is not very consistent at all. They I mean, they're still above zero, they're still positive, but only at plus five, whereas they were uh, up at plus, let's see, this was at plus seven, just back a little over a month ago, while the Guardians are at plus 16. In the end, I like the Guardians to win this one, but I would avoid the over and under bet. The next game we want to look at is Tampa Bay and Kansas City. Tampa Bay is entering the contest burning hot, winners of five out of their last six. While the Royals are ice cold down, you can see they are on a three-game losing streak and have lost four out of their last six. The over-under, you can see that Tampa Bay has won four, uh, one, excuse me, they've been over in games four times out of the last six, while Kansas City has been over also four times in the last six. Neither team has uh, named their starting pitcher as of yet. Um, if you take a look at the power ranking indicator, you can see both teams have been on a downward trend over the last few days, uh, 28 to 19 for Tampa Bay and 20 down to 11 for Kansas City. The score predictor has Tampa Bay by a pretty wide margin of 8 to 2 with a good level of confidence and prediction of 70%. Kansas City has been performing a little bit more consistently with regard to the favorite underdog status, but Tampa Bay has been consistent as well plus 21 to plus 14. In the end, I like the Rays to win this one by several runs, and I like this game to be a high scoring, so go with the Rays and over the line. We have one more game we want to look at. You scroll down through the list here. San Diego and the New York Mets. The Padres enter ice cold down. You can see they are coming off of a loss, and they have lost four of their last six, while the Mets are average they're also coming off of a loss, but they have won four out of their last six. Joe Musgrove is scheduled to pitch for the Padres versus Carlos Carrasco for the Mets. If you look at the pitching matchup, you can see Musgrove is 8-2 and two with a 2.42 ERA and a very nice bet at plus $508, while Carrasco is 10-4 and four with a 4.28 ERA, or excuse me, 4.27 ERA, but is 1-0 and zero with a 1.55 ERA over his last three starts. The score predictor has the Mets by a 5-2 score with 52% level of confidence. If you look at the over and under, um, over for the Padres in four out of their last six games, over for the Mets in two out of their last, their last four games. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see upward trends for both teams. The Mets all the way up here at plus 28, while the Padres have increased from plus 3 on July 15th up to plus 20 right before the All-Star break in just a two-day period of time. The volatility oscillator shows the Mets at plus 19, with the Padres at plus 7, meaning that the Mets have been a little bit more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. In the end, I like the Mets in this one, but I would not bet over the line. I think this is going to be more of a pitching battle, and the score predictor is thinking that way as well. So let's go with the Mets in a game under the line. So there you have it. Those are the games for Major League Baseball for July 24th. Happy betting. We will see you again next time.